Global people and welcome to Fire Skills Hub. Here we learn, we collect, and we grow. In this short video, we want to look at how to forecast data in Excel. We'll get into the inputs, what they mean, and also go through how to make what we call the confidence interval flexible so that it reflects more scenarios, base case, best case, and all of that. So if you are game, join me in Excel and let's get started. Okay, so to get started with forecasting data in Excel, you basically need two columns. A column that is filled with dates. Ideally, these dates should be evenly spaced. Okay, then you also have another column that contains values. So in this example, we are using sales values, right? These two columns are enough. So if you have data like that, all you need to do is to select the entire data set in this case, mine starts from 1st January 2012 and then goes all the way to December 2015. I basically want to see, based on this historical data, how the future will look like. Of course, I mean, this is going to be using an algorithm. In Excel, we call this exponential triple smoothing, just to make sense of how the future will look like based on historical data. So after selecting the data, you go to data, right? Then you should see this icon here called forecast sheet, right? So the tooltip says that it creates a new worksheet to predict data trends. So let's see what we have here. So when I click on the icon, I get this dialog box, right? So it gives us a preview of the actual data, which is the blue part. And then this orange part is into the future, right? You can also use a column chart, even though traditionally we like using the line charts for trend purposes. Okay. Now, there are some other inputs for consideration, right? The obvious one is the forecast end. This is where your forecast data ends in this current preview. You can extend it, okay? But if I expand this, there are other things that I see here. So you notice that I can also change the start period, which in this case starts from the 1st of December. There's also the confidence interval. So this is how sure Excel is in predicting the values. In this case, it is confident that 95% of the values will fall within this range, creating what we call an upper bound and a lower bound. Now this is useful because we are going to use this to vary the confidence interval to give us scenarios, okay, where we are very sure and where we are not too sure. But the base case usually is 95%. Then we also have seasonality. So seasonality are repeating patterns. So example, if you typically sell and in every year the pattern of sales repeats, then it basically means you are using a 12-month seasonality factor. If yours is repeating every quarter, then we are using four and all that. By default, it's set to 12, okay? So if you choose to use the default method, it chooses 12. Sometimes you can also allow Excel to detect automatically based on the historical trend, okay? We're also going to include what we call forecast statistics. I mean, this is not mandatory, but for those who are statistically inclined, there are some parameters that you need to be aware of. Then as I mentioned earlier, you need your timeline range, which basically are the dates, the values range, which in our case are the sales values. There's also fail missing points using interpolation or the option to use zeros. So basically what this means is that if there are missing values in my data, how do you expect Excel to go through this? Sometimes it can calculate average or mean around the closer values. And this is where it uses interpolation. Or, if you like, you can choose to place zeros here. So there's also the option to aggregate duplicate values, right? So here, normally, we choose average. So in a day where I have many points of sales, Excel would average this in the smoothing or forecasting method. Okay, so generally, this is just to give you a sense of what is in here. So let's create our forecast charts and then see what we get. So I'll go ahead and then I'll click. Okay, so as expected, we now have our chart here. Okay, so let me just make this a bit smaller. 
So as I mentioned, the left part or the blue part represents the actual. So every point where it repeats represents seasonality. Then we have our forecast period here. Now, on the left, you have your historical data. So in my case, from A and B, it goes all the way. And then in C, okay, I get a repeat of my last value, right? This doesn't contain formulas, as you can see. So it's a repetition of the values that ended December 2015, same values that are here. Then from the subsequent dates, you realize that there are some values here which are formula driven, right? Now, the truth is that instead of using this method, there's a function that you can use to actually do this job. And this is usually the forecast.ets function. It is this that has been used to first establish the base case, if you like, and then using the confidence interval, it has been used to also determine the upper bound and the lower bound, right? Now, to give you a sense of how this works, let's try and simulate these values that we have, and then we will now put in the confidence interval and make it variable. So first, from 254430, Excel is able to forecast all the way to December 2017. Now, to be able to do this, we are going to use this function called the forecast.ets, this default one. Okay, so I'm standing in the first date after my actual values. So this is going to be my target date. So I've selected the target date here. Then I'll bring in my values. So my values here are the historical values, right? So I'm taking all the way up here for my sales. Ideally, you should lock this F4. So this has been locked. So that represents my values. Then I'll provide the timeline. So for my timeline, I'll use the same range for the dates. I'll select this one, F4 to select this. So after selecting these mandatory inputs, you see the options for seasonality. As I mentioned, you can decide that based on the pattern that you have, maybe your cycle is every 12 months. In that case, you put in 12. If it's quarterly data, you put in four, right, and so on. So here, we'll leave it as a test and let Excel assume the 12 month seasonality factor. So I'm going to close this. Now, when I click on this, I expect to get the same value, right? If I format this to the nearest whole number, you notice that I have 258.725. Okay, if I copy this down, I'm expecting to get that base case value 268.430, right? So I'm basically using functions to give you a sense of how Excel does this. So this, if you like, is the base case. Then we establish what we call the upper bound of this using the confidence interval. So in the best case scenario, 95% accuracy. What value are we expecting here? Now, to do that, Excel needs what we call a confidence interval. So by default, it uses 95%. Again, we can establish this factor using a function. So to establish that, I'm going to use this function called forecast.ets.config, right? Basically helping us establish the factor that Excel is using to stretch it to the upper bound and then the lower bound. So a similar input, first my target date, okay? So I've selected this, then I'll come in here, my values, historical values, I'll go up, select this, okay, F4 to lock this, then come, my timeline always corresponding to the values. So I'll select that and then also lock that as well. So for my confidence level, let's use the default case of 95%. Okay. Now for this purpose, I want to put it outside the cell. So I'll bring a comma and then step outside the cell. Okay. So this is going to be H47. I'll come back and put my value here. So if I close this, you'll notice that I have zero now. So if I go to my value H47 and I put in 95%, right? This is 28,945.51. What this means is that 
for Excel to establish the upper bound, it's going to add this value to your base case, the one that you did earlier. So with this value, we can establish what we call the upper bound. Okay. In this case, let's call it the best case. Okay. So in the best case scenario, what this means is I can take this value and then add it to the established confidence interval. So in this gives me 287671. Now you notice that in the case that we had earlier, this is the upper bound. So 287671. So to make it easier for you to follow, let's call this base case and then let's call this confidence interval, right? So this is what we are going to use to stretch this right and left, right? So my base case plus this will give me best case. Then let me set a column. My worst case or my lower bound is going to be my base case minus this, okay? So again, you realize that I have a 229780 over here, right? So I now have my worst case or my lower bound I have my base case, I have my confidence interval, and then I have my best case, okay? I want to copy this down, so I will be locking this cell that I referenced, F4, to lock this, okay? So with this, when I select this rule and copy this all the way down, my expectation is that I'm going to basically recreate what I had in my earlier plot in the table. So 86430 is my lower bound here, and then 450429 is my upper bound, right? So this is just to give you a sense of how Excel uses the exponential triple smoothing to forecast the upper bound and lower bound. So now that we know this, what it means is that if I come to this formula, this is my base case, okay? And then this is my best case. So if I change this confidence interval and then feed it with the value that I had earlier, I'm going to lock this. So we are playing with 95%. Okay, so this is what I have. I'm going to copy this down. I don't expect anything to change here. I'm just replacing the confidence interval. I'll do same for this. So I'll come, select this confidence interval and then select what we put in here. This is just to make it variable so we can control it. So again, if I copy this down, right, I have the same values. Now, the reason I did this is that, let's say if you're doing a presentation and you want to vary without recreating, okay, this now becomes an input for you. So I'm going to bring the charts that we had. Okay, so to help you appreciate how varying the confidence interval reflects on our visual, I brought the chart closer. So this, is now a confidence interval. So this is going to drive that. So I'm just placing this here. Okay. Now let's vary this a bit. Maybe stretch this to 75% and then up to 100%. So to make it a bit easier on the eye, we can use Excel's form control. So this form control is under developer. We can use a scroll bar. So under developer, you can activate it. If it's not present, you can right click, customize the ribbon, and then on your right, you can activate this, okay? So when we have the developer tab, we can come here and then go to insert and then insert the scroll bar, right? I'm going to draw this here, okay? So basically to help me stretch it a bit. Once I draw this, I can press control one for format control. Okay, so basically I want to have the minimum value from 75 to 100, okay? And then the incremental change, I want to set it at five and also the page change at five as well, okay? Then I'm going to dump the cell link somewhere close here, okay? So this is going to be my cell link and I'm going to click OK. So currently this is reading 75, okay? Now what this means is that if I come here and I select my value, I can increase it to 80, to 85, 90, and so on. So this I'm going to link to my confidence interval. So I'm going to use this value divided by 100, okay? 
So at this point, you realize that if I now control this, right, of course, 100 would not make sense. So we can hover around 75 to 95. So with this, we can easily change our confidence interval. So if you like, sometimes you can also vary the colors. Okay, so in this case, I have my sales here. My forecast sales, you can select the legend, go to format, and then in the shape outline, you can color this gray. Then for your upper confidence, you can come here, format this, and then make this green if you like. And then for your lower confidence, select this, and you can also make this red. Okay. Now, usually for presentation purposes, you don't really need to see all the numbers. So you can select that final point in each line and then probably bring in the data label. Okay, so I'll select this one and then select the last point in here and also bring the data label for that one. And then finally select this last red point and then add the data label for that. Okay, so let's say if you're doing a presentation and you want to vary the confidence interval Basically, you have your scroll bar, okay, so you can bring it a bit closer if you're not too sure, okay, and then you could also use this to increase, and in this case, you are able to see how the final numbers are looking, right. So basically, you now get a sense of how Excel uses the forecast sheet method to forecast your data. Of course, with this understanding, you can make the necessary changes and then have a bit more control over the forecast values. So hopefully you've learned something. We share the worksheet with you so you can practice. Thank you so much for coming along. We'll see you in the next video. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.